So in this video, I just want to go over what can happen once you have your equations, you're solving for a variable, let's say x or m or y or whatever the variable may be. And there's actually three possible choices that you have for a solution. One is the most common one, which you run into, but on occasion you may run into okay, kind of two and three as you see here. So when you finally work out and you collect your like terms and you move things from one side to the other, you eventually will come up with this as your last step. So you will have some number A okay, multiplied by your variable. It might be X or Y or whatever it may be. And then you're going to have some number B on the right hand side. Okay, so for instance, you know, this could be an example, 2m equals 2, 7. Okay, so the 2 is your a, and then the 7 is your b, as you see here. Okay, and I change the variable, the variable doesn't matter. Okay, and it doesn't have to be whole numbers, it could be, you know, even fractions. Okay, so something like this. Okay, and again, you know, in this case, this would be your a, and this would be your b. Okay, that you would have. So in any case, um, what may happen is that you may run into the possibility where your a is not equal to zero. Okay, like in these two cases, here it was two and here it was negative one over three. In that particular case, your solution will have a unique solution. There will actually be a number that you can solve for. And that's what most people are used to. But the next two cases I just wanted to bring about because what happens when you start, you know, collecting your like terms and you notice, uh-oh, A now happens to be zero. Okay. And then your B maybe is not equal to zero. Okay. So what it may look like is something like this. Okay, and an example might be, you know, you collected everything up, so it's zero R is equal to, let's say, seven. What this is telling you, okay, that you can never find an R to make this work because whatever you put for R, if you multiply it by zero, you're going to get zero, but zero never is equal to seven. So what we say in this instance is that, so for number two there, when a is equal to zero and b is not equal to zero, this, if it happens, actually has no solution at all. And that is useful sometimes in real life because then you know that the problem is not solvable. Okay, so it has no solution. Now, number three, you may also run into a is equal to zero and b is equal to zero. So in this case, Okay, so what you have in number three, okay, you might run into something like this, for instance. Now, this actually is always true because no matter what you put in for R, well, zero times anything is always zero and zero always equals zero. So this actually has infinite solutions, infinite solutions. We can put anything we like. So we don't know which one, but any of them will actually work. So infinite solutions, that's what we like to put. So let me illustrate how this can happen through some examples. So here is, for example, one, and let us try to solve this. So I'm going to use the standard rules of solving. So first, okay, I'm going to get rid of the brackets. Okay, so that's what I like to do first. Okay, so I have 4R plus 7 equals 2 times 2 is 4. And then 2 times 8 is 16. Now, okay, so notice I have my two terms with the R. And then I have my terms that do not have an R. So let me just shift them over. So I'm going to shift this over and I'm going to get 4R minus 4R equals to 16 here. And then the sign changes, so minus 7. But notice what happens. 4 minus 4 is 0 r. And this okay, is equal to, okay, so 16 minus 7, 
which is 9. This is exactly number 2 right here, where A is 0 and B is not 0. So here is your A, and here is your B. So from this, there is no solution because you know even if we try to divide both sides by zero you know you're gonna run into okay this and as you may remember this is actually undefined there is no solution to this problem so I just wanted to point that out because it may sometimes happen in some point in your you know academic life or if you're doing something else so that's one example now let's take a look at another example so number two and again I'm gonna just go ahead and try to solve this. So I'm going to get rid of brackets here. So I'm solving like I normally would. So negative is going to be negative 6m. And then negative is going to change the positive 5 to negative. Then I have m minus 5. All right. So let me again. So I have all my terms with my m on one side. Let's bring them over. I'm going to bring this guy over here. So I have 7m minus 6m. Okay, minus m is equal to. And then what I have next, okay, is I'm going to shift that negative 5 over. So what I have is negative 5 plus 5 now. And now, so 7 minus 6 is 1, and 1 minus actually 1. So remember, there's a 1 here. So again, I have 0m, okay? And that equals to, and actually negative 5 plus 5 is 0. So that's this example, number 3, right here. This means that I have infinite solutions, okay, for this particular example. So that can happen, and I just wanted to give you these two particular examples. All the other ones, which is pretty much almost everything you will do, okay, will always be of the nature where you don't actually have a zero okay that comes out but if you do now you know what happens all right so one has no solution and then the other one like this one has infinite solutions you can put whatever you like for m in this case okay and it will always be true okay the equation is always going to be zero equals zero all right thank you for watching okay help one and inspire a million see you at the journey